Welcome to the Section 111 Podcast with your host, TJ Shoemaker. And welcome back to another edition of the Section 111 Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Shoemaker, and I'm joined today by my brother, Tyler Shoemaker. Tyler, how you doing? Good. It's good to be back and doing another episode. We've it's been uh, what like a month or two now since we've since we've gotten to talk, and um, the football season kind of flew by us. Yeah, I kind of took a little break for a little bit, but uh, but we're back and kind of at the right time too. It's the perfect time of the year. Uh, we got championship week upon us this weekend, so I'm really pumped for that. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, it's obviously a good good season for my Buckeyes. So I'm I'm hoping we can close that out with the with the big 10 championship this weekend yeah and you've definitely and you've had a a really good year uh you know betting against the spread too so give us a little info about how how that has gone for you this year yeah uh hopefully you know all the listeners have been following me on twitter and, and taking my picks because uh my best bets this year um for the whole season went 70 34 and 4 which is about 67 percent against the spread so i had a had a phenomenal year um, betting wise. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, I actually was able to take down uh, two two different handicapping contests. I uh, got first place in both. Uh, and there were 50, 50 to sixty people in in both contests. Um, so I'm I'm pretty proud of that. And uh, I'm actually in the midst of of a playoff run uh, right now um, for one of the one of the contests. And I'm I'm the leader by two uh, two games going into this last weekend. So. Uh, hopefully I can, can hold that off and get a, get a third championship under my belt. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I've had a ton of people reach out to me saying, uh, how much they enjoy the picks and they're, they're like, dude, you got to give me some more picks. I've, I've been killing it and stuff. So, <laughs> so, uh, the listeners definitely appreciate it. So, um, thanks for that. And, uh, good luck to you trying to fi- finish out this last weekend and, uh, take home some more cash. Yep, definitely. Thank you. All right, so it is championship week, and uh, you know we've got some big games, big games up on us. Uh, one of which is has your Ohio State Buckeyes going up against the Wisconsin Badgers. How you feeling going into this game? Uh, I feel pretty good. You know, we saw uh, Justin Fields get hurt in the Michigan game, uh, which kind of took everybody's breath away. And then, thankfully, he came out of the tent seven snaps later and threw up gorgeous 40 yard bomb to Garrett Wilson for a touchdown. So I think, I think he's going to be okay. Uh, I think he said at his press conference this week that um, he's going to have to wear a big bulky brace. So I think he's going to be a little bit limited in the run game, uh, but hopefully uh, JK Dobbins and, and uh, Chase Young can uh, kind of get it, get it done uh, in lieu of Justin Fields running ability this week. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I don't, I don't think the Buckeyes are going to have any trouble this weekend. I think, they're probably probably going to roll sort of like they did uh, in the regular season against Wisconsin. I just don't think that Wisconsin has the horses to to hang in there, um, even on a neutral field. So, which is going to be predominantly um, an Ohio State crowd. So, I like the Buckeyes in this one too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We uh, we've kind of made Indianapolis our our second home here lately. So, <laughs> hopefully, we can can keep that up. Yeah, for sure. Um, then we got uh we got a big one in the SEC with LSU and Georgia. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, who do you have favored in that? Uh, based on your numbers and how do you see that one playing out? Yeah, um, my numbers have this have LSU winning by about six. Um, so the line right now I think is seven seven and a half. So, um, you know, it's definitely not something I'm I'm putting my money on because I mean that that line is pretty sharp. Um, gun to my head, I would take Georgia in the points, but. Um, you know, given given we don't know what what the status of uh, DeAndre Swift is going to be, you know, they're missing uh, the one receivers um, out for the first half because he got in a fight in the last game. Yeah, Pickens. Yeah, yeah, Pickens is out the, for the first half, and uh, of course their their best receiver Lawrence Cager uh, is out for the season with an injury. So um, I don't I don't love either either side in this, and and honestly, I won't I won't be surprised if LSU comes out and tries to make a statement to the uh, playoff committee. Yeah, I don't either. And uh, like you mentioned, Georgia is going to be down some of their key players and that's an offense that has struggled at times this year. So I think that they're going to have a hard time scoring enough, enough points to keep up with LSU's high powered offense. So 
Um, that's something something to watch out for there. And uh, I I personally like LSU in that matchup as well by probably more than a touchdown. So, but we'll see. Uh, in the Big 12, we got a pretty good matchup too. We've got Oklahoma versus Baylor in a rematch where Oklahoma uh, came back and won earlier in the season after being down by multiple scores. How do you see that one playing out? Yeah, uh, this is actually, um, I've got two best bets this week, and this is one of them. Uh, I'm going to take Baylor plus the eight and a half. Um, I actually, I like it at eight and a half, but I uh, also put in a bet where I bought up to plus 10. I got that at, I think, minus 135 odds, so not not terrible. Uh, so just to kind of give me a little safety blanket, I took Baylor plus 10. Okay. okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Baylor Baylor had a 28-3 to lead the, the last matchup, uh, just kind of, got conservative and, and blew that late. But, um, you know, Oklahoma, I think is one of the, one of the worst teams in the country as far as um, turnover margin and, and taking care of the ball. Um, so I, I think with that stingy Baylor defense, I think they can stay in it and keep this one close. Although my numbers do have Oklahoma winning by about five and a half. Uh, so, you know, five, six points. Okay. Yeah. And Oklahoma is that actually ranks 115th in the country in turnover margin. So, uh, they're at minus 0.7. So they're actually turning the ball over more than they're creating turnovers. So, uh, that, that is something to watch out for as Baylor's defense has been pretty stingy this year. Yep. Yep. Definitely. And that, you know, that, that stat matches the eye test. Um, as far as when you watch Oklahoma, it just doesn't feel like that defense can, can really generate enough, uh, enough pressure and enough turnovers to, to widen the, widen the gap. I mean, they, they definitely have an explosive offense, but uh, I think the Baylor defense will be able to slow them down. And if that Baylor offense can do anything, I, I think they've got a shot to not only cover the number, but maybe win out. Right. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So it's about that time after, you know, after uh, all the games on Saturday, we're going to be sitting in front of the TV on Sunday as we prepare, prepare to hear who's going to be in the college football playoff. Um, you and I have talked about this off air and we kind of agree that there are three teams that are, that are essential locks and that's Ohio state Clemson and LSU, not necessarily in that order, but, uh, right now we'll go over that order of what it should be based on the data and everything, uh, according to the computer models. Yeah. So based on my power ratings, which, uh, to clarify, my power rating system is kind of an aggregate model, um, taking into account. Uh, number fire, which is uh, mostly an efficiency-based uh, power rating system. Uh, Jeff Sagarin's ratings, which used to be used in the old BCS model. Uh, Pi ratings, which has been one of the most um, accurate computer models, according to the prediction tracker.com um, over the last handful of years since they've been in operation. Um, and I also use keeper ratings, who's been one of the highest graded against the spread um, power rating systems this year, as well as um, Bill Connolly's SP plus, which uh, is an ESPN product now. Um, so, so I cover all my bases with, with those five models. So, you know, there's not, you know, bias one way or the other, you know, for, for one conference or for, you know, favoring offense more defense more. Um, it's, it's a very, very neutral um, system. So based on, my system, uh, Ohio State is my number one team, um, for and it's really not all that close. Um, I have them power rated. Uh, it, it's graded on a curve, so Ohio State is the is the top team, so they're a hundred uh, power rating. Clemson is number two with a ninety three point one power rating. So you know, if you want to look at a hypothetical line. If those if those two teams were to play, my numbers say that Ohio State would be about a seven point favorite on a neutral field over Clemson. Um, next, right behind Clemson is LSU at ninety three, so just a, a tenth of a point difference between Clemson and LSU. Um, Alabama is my fourth team from a power rating standpoint. However, when you take the Tua injury into effect uh, into account. Uh, he's worth about seven points to this power rating. So that would, that would drop them way down. Um, so given that, uh, Georgia would be my number four team. So, so the committee, I think has, um, the four teams, correct. I, uh, I would just switch Clemson and LSU, um, for the two and three spot. But, you know, again, when you're talking about the playoff and, 
and how the matchups work out, that really doesn't matter. So I, I think they've got it right for now. Um, and I actually, my power ratings agree with number five and number six as well. Uh, I've got uh, Utah right there behind Georgia and Oklahoma right behind Utah. So I think, I think the committee's got it um, pretty right for right now. So we'll see, we'll see how it shakes out on, um, on Sunday after all these games are played. Yeah. And let's, let's get into that for a minute. Let's, let's play a little hypothet- hypothetical and say that Ohio State wins, Clemson wins, LSU knocks off Georgia. How would you order that top three based on those games? So if the top three teams win, um, and I've kind of already gone through this and uh, calculated, you know, hypothetical line and what that would do to each team's resume. Um, and, and I actually put this out on Twitter as a blind poll because, you know, there's been a lot of backlash, particularly from LSU and, and SEC fans as to why Ohio State is number one, because there's this narrative that Ohio State hasn't played anybody. Who have they However, played? <laughs> right. But who have they played, Paul? <laughs> but so, Paul. So I, I took the liberty of uh, putting together uh, resumes based on the power ratings put them out on Twitter blindly and had people vote and uh, Ohio state was overwhelmingly voted number one. So it just goes to show you that the committee is doing it right. People just don't, you know, they see that name and Ohio state's not in the sec or in the South. So it's just assume they can't play football and don't play anybody that is any good at football. So <laughs> actually when, when you break down the resumes, Ohio state at number one, um, assuming they win this weekend, they will have six top 40 wins according to my power ratings by an average margin of victory of 28. They will have four top 20 wins by an average margin of victory of 21.8. And they would have three top 10 wins by an average margin of victory of 25.3 LSU in contrast. um, LSU LSU would have the nod over Ohio state in terms of top 40 wins. They would have seven to compare to Ohio state six, but their margin of victory in those games was only 13 uh, top 20 wins. LSU has four, which is the same as Ohio state, but the difference is LSU beat those four teams by an average margin of victory of seven compared to Ohio state's almost 22. And LSU would also have three top 10 wins like Ohio state, but by eight points a game compared to Ohio state's 25 points a game. So, I mean, when you look at those numbers, it, it's, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer um, as to, to who should get the number one seed based on that resume. Yeah, I mean, looking at looking at those numbers and also just the the raw statistics, uh, you know, team rankings and, and whatnot, Ohio State is by far the most balanced team, uh, both run and pass on offense and just offense and defense in general. Uh, and when you can compare them to LSU, it's really – Really no contest. Uh, LSU's defense has struggled heavily this year. Uh, they rank 32nd in uh, opponent yards per game, giving up 352.9 yards per game, as opposed to Ohio State, who ranks second and gives up 232 yards per game, so 120 yards less. Um, their pass defense, out of, out of the main contenders, they rank last at uh, 51st in the country, um, giving up 220 yards, uh, passing yards per game, uh, as opposed to Ohio State, who only gives up 141. And then uh, you look at their their rush defense. Ohio State sixth in rush defense, while LSU is 30th, giving up 132 and a half yards a game. So in every defensive statistic, Ohio State is head and shoulders above them. And offensively, LSU and Ohio State are pretty similar. Um, other than pass offense, Ohio State has, averages more uh, points per game by two. Um, they're, and Ohio State and LSU rank first and second in the country. And then uh, offensive yards per game, LSU 556, uh, and Ohio State third at 534. So offensively, they're pretty pretty even. And then when you look at defense, I mean, Ohio State is – I mean, it's not even in comparison uh, comparing the two. So – I like I like Ohio State at number one too. I have no problem at all with them being there um, or at number one and LSU number two. So um, I'm fine with it, and the numbers support it. So 
that's that's what it should be. Yeah, and I mean, and again, I've got I've got Clemson power ranked second, right above LSU, and you know when you get into into their resume, that's when you can say okay. They're power ranked similarly, but when you look at the resume, it's understandable why LSU is number two. So, um, in terms of where the committee, what the you know the criteria that the committee has to look at, I've got no problem with them having LSU number two um, because you look at Clemson's resume. For instance, the average power rating of teams that Clemson has played is 59. The average power rating that the LSU has played is 67.7. So what that means is on average, just on any given week of the season, LSU had to play a team that was almost nine points better than the average team Clemson had to play. And, um, and for comparison's sake, Ohio state was at 67.1. So uh, about a, about a half point below um, LSU. So as far as, as far as this narrative, um, you know, the LSU just had to play this gauntlet. I mean, they did have a very strong, strength of schedule, but I mean, Ohio state's is right there, you know, with just a half point difference uh, on average. Um, but, but going back to Clemson's resume, only two top 40 wins uh, by an average margin of victory of 20. So solid, solid average margin of victory. But then you go down the next two columns and zero top 20 wins. So then obviously zero top 10 wins compared to, you know, LSU's three top 10 wins and four top 20 wins. So I mean, from a resume standpoint, it 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 really is a no brainer that that the committee is going to have LSU at two and Clemson at three. Right. Uh, so I, I have no problem with that. I mean, I do think, I do think head to head, I I would definitely give give the nod to Clemson, but you know because the the playoff committee is tasked with you know a, a more resume based ranking system, I, I've got no problem with LSU being number two. Yeah, I don't either, and. Uh to kind of put what you were saying into perspective as far as Clemson's uh, average opponent rating of 59, it would be like them playing Boston College 12 times <laughs> this yeah, past that's, season. That's what Boston that's College correct, is rated yeah. is a 59. Yep. It'd be like based, playing yeah. them 12 times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that's, that's good that you brought this. So based on my power ratings, Clemson's average opponent was essentially Boston College. <laughs> um, and then you look at, uh, Ohio State at sixty seven point one. That would be like playing Cincinnati, uh, C- Cincinnati or Michigan State every week. Yeah, um, and LSU at sixty seven point seven. That's Mississippi, about like Mississippi yeah, State. Mississippi State. So you know, I mean, that, uh, Ohio State and LSU. You know, when you look at it like that, that's that's pretty pretty much the same thing. I mean, Mississippi State and Michigan State are essentially the same team. <laughs> so I mean, that very similar. But I mean, you look at Clemson and. and their average rating is Boston college and that's, that's what your average opponents like. And then, yeah, you know, and then you've got Dabo going on TV and complaining that, you know, nobody wants Clemson in and they ain't played nobody, but I mean, <laughs> the, the numbers don't lie. And they, I, I think Clemson's a great team and, and I think they're the second best team in the country, but I mean, you can't defend that. You cannot defend that resume. <laughs> you just can't. I right. mean, for again, just to to give the listeners more of an understanding of just how bad Clemson's resume actually is. Their best win is Texas A&M power rating wise. And their rating is 73.9. That would be Ohio state's Ohio state or LSU's fifth best win, which LSU did play them. And that is their fifth best win. So, I mean that, how do you defend that? When you you know when you're lobbying for your team to be number one or or whatever, and your best win would be the fifth best win for the two other teams you're arguing against, how do you yeah. how do you even say that with a straight yeah. face? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right, so uh, so you've got LS or Ohio State one, LSU two, Clemson three. Uh, let's let's debate number four a little bit. I uh, I know that some people are kind of back and forth on this. Um, some people have debated whether Georgia should remain in with the loss, which I, I don't agree with. I think if LSU wins, like we're in this scenario, we're assuming they do, um, Georgia's out. So that leaves Oklahoma, Utah, and Baylor, which Oklahoma and Baylor obviously play. So it's probably going to be winner of Oklahoma, Baylor, or Utah. Um, how do you see the fourth, the fourth spot shaking out? Well, if we're going to go – under the assumption that, you know, based on the, 
power ratings. Oklahoma is five points better than Baylor. So we're, we're going to credit Oklahoma here with a five point win over Baylor. Okay. If that's the case, you're then, and, and LSU beats Georgia. So Georgia's out with two losses. Right. Um, so it's, it's Oklahoma versus Utah for this last spot. So when I, when I first started thinking about this, I thought, well, Utah's a more complete team. You know, I, I think they're probably more deserving, but then I get, I get digging into the numbers and it's kind of hard to justify that from a resume standpoint, because when you compare these two teams, I mean, their power rating is almost identical. I have Utah 0.3 points better than Oklahoma. So, I mean, they're almost identical from a power rating standpoint, but when you look at the, at the resume, Oklahoma's average opponent power rating is 66.4. Utah's is 62.9. So, I mean, on average, Oklahoma's playing a team that's three and a half points better than, than what Utah's playing on a weekly basis. So that's, that's big. Um, and then you look at what they've accomplished on the field uh, in terms of top 40 wins, Oklahoma gets the nod six to four. Now the difference here is Oklahoma only beat those six teams by an average margin of victory of three, which I don't even know how that's, <laughs> how that's even possible that you're in that many tight games, but, but they were, um, whereas Utah's four top 40 wins uh, was by 10 points. So, you know, that that's pretty similar. Oklahoma beat two more teams, but, um, Utah beat the ones they did play more soundly. Um, and then you go to top 20 wins, very similar. Both teams had three top 20 wins. Uh, Oklahoma beat those teams by three points. Utah beat those teams by five points a game and neither team has a top 10 win. Um, so the resumes are pretty similar, um, power rating similar, but when you look at the average opponent power rating and the number of top 40 wins, I think you have to give a slight edge to Oklahoma in that. Yeah, I think so too. And I brought this up to you, uh, earlier off the air, but, uh, so assuming that Utah beats Oregon this week, Oregon would become Utah's best win. Uh, and they have a power rating of 80.4. Baylor also has a power rating of 80.4. So assuming Oklahoma beats Baylor this week, that would be, that would essentially be like Oklahoma beating Oregon twice. Right, so exactly that extra win uh, on top of two more top 40 wins and playing in a little bit more prestigious uh, conference as your, your power ratings actually have the big 12 conference as a second rated conference behind the sec and just slightly in front of the big 10, which big, big 10 fans don't, don't kill us. It's <laughs> it's not our yeah, opinion. So, it's just right. so, what so the numbers right there, say. You know, because I'm sure people listening at this whole time have been like, okay, well, he went to Ohio State. He's an Ohio State fan. Of course, of course, he thinks Ohio State's number one and the Big Ten is great. But no, the power ratings actually have Big 12 as the second best conference. Um, and, and that's, I think, largely due to the fact that the Big 12 doesn't really have any terrible teams. You know, Kansas right. and West Virginia are the worst teams in the Big 12 and they're they're both power rated higher than say Rutgers and Maryland. So the big 10 just has kind of some bottom dwellers that, that bring that average power rating down. But uh, the big 10, obviously at the top, um, you know, has a little bit more juice than the, than the uh, big 12 does. Yeah. And, and going back to Oklahoma and Utah, the, the big 12 is, is pretty far ahead of the pac 12 uh, as far as conference conference prestige and stuff. So um, I tend to give the, the nod to Oklahoma as well. Um, over Utah and and hey, if you guys remember back on uh, July first, I predicted the Utah Utes to be in the college football playoffs. So you would think that I would be pushing harder for Utah to get into this <laughs> thing, but uh, non biased, I just looking at the raw numbers, I can't put Utah ahead of Oklahoma. But if Baylor does somehow shock the world and beat Oklahoma this weekend, I I don't see. I don't see Baylor's resume stacking up as well uh, against Utah's as Oklahoma's did. So if Baylor wins I th and Utah Utah wins, I think that Utah actually slides into that fourth spot. Yep, that's uh, that's kind of what the what the metrics say as well. Um, Baylor uh, does have one more top forty win uh, than Utah, and I guess actually if they if they beat Oklahoma, they would have two more. However. Um, 
even with another top 20 win, they still wouldn't have as many top 20 wins as um, Utah does. So um, I, I do think Utah would get the nod. Now, the one caveat that I will give um, in terms of the Utah versus Oklahoma argument and what the committee, if the committee is set on putting Utah in, you know, and, and then putting Utah ahead of Oklahoma this week, I think was a big deal. And this is why if the committee thinks that, that Utah is just better, they're more complete, which you could make that argument, then they're going to have a crutch. And that's because Utah's only loss is to USC and on a Friday night, Zach Moss, their Utah's great running back, either didn't play or left the game early, injured, and their quarterback was injured at the time. Yeah, I think um, Zach Moss was hurt, if I if I remember correctly. So, you know, we we've seen the committee in the past forgive those type of circumstances. You think back to uh, when Kelly Bryant got hurt for Clemson and they lost to Syracuse. The committee kind of overlooked that because of the injury situation. Um, so if they do, if they do need an excuse to put Utah in, like if they just gut feeling think Utah's better and they need to rationalize it, they can say, well, Oklahoma lost to a mediocre Kansas state team at full strength. Whereas Utah's only loss was, you know, on a Friday night game when they didn't have their two best players, you know, for the whole game. So that, that's something to keep an eye on, uh, in, in this last release of the college football playoff rankings, because I, I do think if they, if they want to put Utah in, there's certainly a way they can rationalize it uh, to do that. Yeah, they could. And USC, according to your power rankings is, or power ratings is actually ranked slightly ahead of Kansas state. So it is uh, a not as bad a loss, I guess on, on Utah's part. Um, and the, the committee actually has Utah ranked fifth right now, uh, in the current polls. So that's something to remember too. Are they, are they going to have Oklahoma jump Utah? I don't know. Maybe they put Utah there for a reason. Maybe it's, well, the, if, maybe yeah, it's, if Utah wins and they're in, I don't, I don't know. But um, just looking at the raw statistics, uh, you and I have both looked at it and agreed that Oklahoma should be that team. If they beat Baylor based on, uh, you know, the, the power ratings and their wins and, who they've beaten and everything and top 40 wins, top 20 wins and whatnot. Um, but you know, they, they might've put in, they might've put Utah there for a reason. So Utah could be that fourth team come Sunday. Yeah, I, I think so. And like we said, even though we, we both would give the nod resume wise to Oklahoma, I do think the committee putting Utah there is important this week because Utah's resume is never going to be worse than it is right now, assuming they win this week. Um, so if they already have Utah ahead of Oklahoma and they both go pick up another good win, I don't know how you, I don't know how they would jump Oklahoma over Utah unless it's just right. a, a matter of, you know, maybe Utah wins by three against Oregon and Oklahoma goes and just beats Baylor down. Then maybe, you know, like, like in Ohio state in 2014 or something, um, and they just emphatically win, then maybe you do that. But, but yeah, I think the committee putting Utah there this week was, was definitely a big deal. Um, even though we both would probably give the nod to Oklahoma. Yeah. And like I said earlier, how Baylor and Oregon actually have the same exact, uh, power rating, you know, that's, that's a good point that with Utah being where they're at, uh, they don't even have that Oregon win yet. Oklahoma already has that Baylor win. If Utah beats Oregon and Oklahoma beats Baylor, it's essentially the same win. So that's right. a good point. Why, why would they have Oklahoma jump Utah? Um, but I guess, <laughs> I mean, I guess it'll kind of be uh, based on style points and whoever they feel is, you know, in favor of that fourth spot, but we'll just have to wait and see. But you and I agree that uh, it probably should be Oklahoma based on the, the resume, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm pulling for Utah to complete yeah. my to complete my uh preseason prediction but yeah since uh you know seven and five texas let you down <laughs> yeah they were almost six and six texas yeah <laughs> okay cool hook them <laughs> uh one thing i did want to talk about though as far as uh 
you know, resumes and total body of work and everything was uh, really the perception of Oklahoma and and their defense. Because I, as I was going over uh, just kind of the raw team statistics and everything, I was surprised at how, um, as far as the contenders, as how mediocre or average um, that Oklahoma's defense was compared to the other contenders. For example, um, opponent yards per game, Oklahoma actually ranked 23rd in the country, uh, and that's ahead of LSU and Baylor, two two other playoff uh, contenders. And then you look at pass defense, Oklahoma ranks 17th in the country compared to last season when they were like 100th. So um, they've definitely made strides this season defensively. It doesn't feel like it, but uh, when you look at the numbers, they actually have. And um, I was really surprised by that. Now they do, out of all the contenders, they do have uh, the lowest uh, rated rush defense at 49th in the country. Um, that's one spot below Baylor, but, uh, an opponent, opponent points per game. They are last, but, uh, everything else, they're pretty, they're pretty much middle of the pack, which was surprising, uh, considering just the general perception of Oklahoma. But, uh, how, how'd you view, view Oklahoma season and what was your perception of their defense? Yeah, uh, that, that was, um, surprising when, when you told me that, cause I, you know, there is, there is definitely the perception there that that they don't play any defense. And uh, I guess that's probably just from, from years past, particularly, you know, last year, which cost them, you know, when they had a Heisman trophy winner on offense and they just couldn't stop anybody, which was kind of Ohio state's problem last year too. (laughs) Um, But yeah, they offensively super explosive, obviously they, you know, Jalen hurts and CD lamb. And I mean, they've got weapons all over the place, but you don't really think of them as, being able to stop people. And and as you were saying those stats, I was thinking, I mean, they've got impressive defensive numbers and they're playing in an, in a very offensive league. So, you know, especially you pass, them, especially pass offense when they're ranked right. 17th in the country, only giving up 189.3 uh, pass yards per game playing in the big 12. I thought that was, that yeah, was pretty impressive. That is, that's, that's really impressive and, and surprising. So, um, you know, so maybe they're a little bit more complete than, than people are giving them credit for, you know, and that that's going to come in handy when, you know, potentially they're, they're in a, an, an argument against Utah for that final spot. And, you know, I think the perception is going to be that Utah is just a more complete team and that's end of story, but you know, the, the numbers may let you know that it's a little bit closer than, than you'd think. And, and one thing I was kind of uh, looking at the stats, kind of comparing Oklahoma and Utah. And one thing that I looked at was, was rush defense uh, where Utah is first in the country versus uh, Oklahoma's 49th in the country. Like I mentioned earlier. And I was, I was thinking why, why is Utah's defense uh, the number one rush defense in the country? And so it got me looking at other stats and, I stumbled across time of possession, which Utah's third in the country in time of possession, uh, averaging 34 minutes and 40, 40 seconds a game that they have the ball. So, uh, I mean, for more than half the game, their defense is on the sideline. And uh, compare that to Oklahoma, who right at uh, 30 minutes is is where their their defense is on the sideline for half of the game. So it's it's kind of crazy. You would think that, you know, o- Oklahoma being the offensive juggernaut that they are, that they would have uh, the ball a little bit longer, and maybe that's why some of the defensive numbers are skewed. But it's really not when Oklahoma's defense is on, on the field for half the game and still putting up, uh, you know, those defensive ranks I thought was – pretty impressive and uh i was i was shocked when i was going over this that oklahoma's defense is actually better than than what anyone i think has given them credit for yeah yeah for sure that's that's definitely impressive and and surprising um you know you mentioned the the rush defensive issues for them though i mean if they if they make it in and, and they're the four seed and they're playing you know probably ohio state that's gonna kill them um if you can't stop the run and you're playing I mean, really, any any of the other three teams in the playoff, but I mean, particularly if you're playing Ohio State or Clemson, right. you know, J.K. Dobbins or, or Travis Etienne, I mean, you're you're done. You have no 
no chance of winning if you can't if you can't slow the run down. A yeah, bit. I I think if Oklahoma gets in, they're praying that LSU uh, becomes the number one seed. That way, uh, they face a a Clemson or a LSU Tigers offense that uh, is only mustering up. Let's see. 175 yards per game on the ground. So um, as opposed to if you play Ohio State or Clemson, you're looking at uh, Ohio State, who ranks third in the country with uh, averaging 281 yards on the ground, and Clemson 16th, who averages 241. So uh, I think they'll take LSU at, at 175 for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think I think J.K. Dobbins actually averages more than that. Himself. <laughs> yeah, he probably Honestly. does. Probably does. <clears throat> But uh, one more thing, when I was, when I was looking at those statistics, uh, I mentioned the the rush defense, and I thought I thought okay, this this Utah defense has to have some sort of uh, weakness, and I was like, wh- I was trying to figure out what that was, and I finally did. So I looked at sack percentage, and what sack percentage is is the percentage of times that you sack the the quarterback per pass attempt so for example uh ohio state is number one in the country and they they sack the opposing quarterback 13.07 percent of the time uh per pass attempt so um compare that to utah who is 44th in the country at 6.84 percent um i kind of cap this at about if you're at 10 percent or higher um, with sack percentage, that's kind of an elite pass rush. So this stat is indicative that Utah, yeah, they might be number one in rush defense, but they aren't generating generating any sort of pass rush, which is kind of concerning when you look at number one, two, and three is going to be, you know, either Ohio State, LSU, or Clemson. They're going to have to face one of those if Utah gets in the playoffs. So are they going to be able to generate enough pass rush to even slow one of these three teams down? And I really don't know. Um, it's going to be tough. Their their pass defense isn't terrible. I mean, they're ranked 20th in the country, but that's behind uh, Oklahoma. Um, so, I mean, they're giving up 195 yards through the air per game. So I don't know that this Utah team stacks up well against these other three um, contenders, and I just don't think it's a great matchup for them. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so either. And and when you look at Utah and, and Oklahoma both, I don't know that they've got enough in the trenches to be able to compete with the other three teams. I think I think Ohio State, Clemson, and LSU are kind of in a league of their own. And honestly, when in terms of offensive and defensive line and, and generating pressure and being able to run the ball, I, I think Ohio State and Clemson are, are clearly um you know the the two most complete teams in, in those regards. Yeah, and like I mentioned with that sack percentage, Ohio State's one, Clemson is third. Um, and at 11.11%, and none of the other contenders are even close to 9%. So um, really that's indicative of no other teams are a lead at the pass rush except for Ohio State and Clemson. And as I look at these other defensive statistics, uh, it's pretty clear that Ohio State and Clemson, um, both offensively and defensively, are top five, top ten in just about every category. So those are by far the two most balanced teams um, that are in, potentially going to be in the playoffs. And, you know, for Utah, Oklahoma, Baylor, um, you could throw George in there too. I just don't know that any of those other teams uh, stack up well against against LS, or against or Ohio State and uh, Clemson. Um, but LSU ha- does have the, their offense in their favor and especially behind the, the arm of Joe Burrow. So, I'm looking forward to the playoffs uh, and especially finding out who who's going to be in this fourth spot because whoever it is is going to have their hands full with either Ohio State or LSU probably. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to see how how the four seed shakes out and and I'm also you know interested to see. I would assume that you know if Ohio State takes care of business this week, they're going to stay uh, in the top spot, which you know in this year's playoff is going to be huge because you avoid Clemson in the first round. Um, but who knows? I mean, the committee's done stranger things. So maybe if LSU comes out and kills Georgia, maybe the committee jumps them over Ohio state. And then you're looking at a, an Ohio state Clemson semifinal, but, um, you know, as a Buckeye fan and just as a college football fan in general, 
like I said, I do think Ohio State and Clemson are the two best teams. So I, I kind of hope um, that that they don't play in the first round and that we can kind of get that national championship matchup. And and hopefully for, for my Buckeyes sake, they can get some revenge on, on old Dabo. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to think that those are the, the two best teams also. I know some, some people will argue LSU, and I totally get that argument. That's that's pretty legitimate. But, uh, you know, LSU – or sorry, Clemson and Ohio State are two teams that have been there uh, recently, and I think that that as far as their balance goes, I think that would be one hell of a matchup. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that that's how it plays out. And I, like you said, I hope that they don't end up playing in, in the first uh, round of the playoffs. So I hope that that ends up being a national championship matchup. And uh, I'm looking forward to that one for sure. Yep. Yep. Me too. All right. Uh, did you have, have anything else for us? Uh, no. Uh, like I said, my, my best bets this week are, our Baylor plus eight and a half uh, against Oklahoma uh, and Florida Atlantic minus seven and a half against UAB. Um, you know, with such a small slate, I don't have my usual five best bets. I'm just gonna gonna lay money on those two and be a little bit more selective this week. Um, if anyone wants to see the visual of my of my power ratings and how all these resumes stack up and compare, um, I've got it. Um, I will share it and pin it on my Twitter. Um, so you can just go. It's it's a Google sheet, so you can just click on it and. Go to it on your browser, and uh, it's all color coded, and it's uh, spent a lot of time doing. It's very organized, and really gives you a good visual of of how these teams stack up and and what they've been able to accomplish this year. So, uh, hopefully, you guys check that out and and enjoy. Yeah, uh, and I want I wanted to announce that uh, I actually have T shirts made. I've had them made for a while, but I've kind of been in my for a little bit. But uh, um, I'm back, and I'm. Looking forward to doing more episodes soon, and but I do have T-shirts made. They're I'm not going to make a single penny off of them. Uh, they're going to be fifteen dollars. So if you would like to buy one, uh, message myself on on Twitter, or you can even uh, hit me up on Facebook if if I'm uh, your friend on there. But uh, buy a T-shirt, support the podcast, and uh, just you know support what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do. I do have some other uh, guests lined up in the future. I know it seems like I've been saying this and saying this, but uh I found out that when you're trying to get more high profile guests that uh your schedules don't always match up and it's it's hard to catch them. But um I do have some some pretty cool guests lined up. I know that uh Tyler, you know one of them that that I've got lined up. Uh we just got to set it up and make it happen, but it's a it's a really cool one and you guys are going to be, you know, be really impressed with it. And it's going to be one heck of an interview. And I'm really looking forward to doing that one. Yeah, definitely. And he's, um, you know, I, I can just tell you, he's, he's, uh, I'm fortunate enough that he's, he's a friend of mine. He's, he's a, a high profile guy and, and he has some very high profile connections and he's, he's a great guy and, and great personality and he'll, he'll be a fun guest to have on the podcast for sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, but, uh, Tyler, thanks for joining me. And, uh, giving everyone some info on, on this weekend's games and uh, the potential playoff picture, and uh, we truly appreciate it. All right. Yep. No problem. Have a good day. See you. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, but I hope that you guys stay tuned for future episodes as I do have uh, some pretty cool guests lined up. But uh, until then, I hope that you guys learned something. I hope that you gained some new perspective. And most importantly, I hope you all were entertained. But thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Section 111 podcast.